Yeah, we feel like it was sort of getting our act a little bit together as far as being consistent. Uh, you know, we still got a long way to go, and we realize that, but uh, the boys are still eager about it, and they, they feel like, okay, this is going to be the race we win, and they keep looking at it from that standpoint, and I do too, and uh, it's just going to be a matter of time we start winning some races. Do you think you have a better chance to win races on short tracks or super speedways? It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. We run uh, good at Darlington. We run good at Daytona. And, uh, you know, we run good at Bristol. We'll run good here at Martinsville. So it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. As long as it's a racetrack, we run good on. Gentlemen, start your engines. Television Network presents the NASCAR Winston Cup Series Sovereign Bank 500 from Martinsville, Virginia. This SETN NASCAR Racing Special is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer who invite you to see the 1987 Ford cars and trucks. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Exxon, quality you can count on. Exxon by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade is thirst aid for that deep down body thirst. And by Mr. Goodwrench. No one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodwrench. No one. You're looking at what has been a most unusual sight here in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia over the last number of days, and that's sunshine here at the Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. But we welcome you today to SETN's coverage of the Sovereign Bank 500. Hello, everyone. I'm Eli Gold, and indeed, this is an interesting stop on the Winston Cup Tour. Another short track before we head back to the Super Speedways for an extended period, but it's a race where practice time has been very much at a premium. Joining us today here in the booth will be Dr. Jerry Punch, and Jerry Gappins will be with us on Pit Road, and this is very much a day where the educated guest is going to come into play. Indeed, Eli. The veteran drivers here at Martinsville may have an, a little bit of an edge here today because, as you said, it's rained the last two days here. They have not had very much practice. In fact, the brakes are of concern. The setup is a concern. The gearing. A lot of uh, question marks here. And, of course, the new cars are only 3,500 pounds this year, so there's 200 pounds less weight. That may be an advantage for brakes, but no one got to try them. You've hit on something that one team is talking about rather consistently this week, and that is a new setup under the car. A question about are the brakes broken in and a new gearing for Dale Earnhardt. He and Richard Childress, crew chief Kirk Shelmerdine, have gotten together and said this is how we think Martinsville needs to be run right now. Of course, Earnhardt is coming off a series of races where he's been a consistent winner, but not without its controversy. Well, he's been almost unbeatable. Five wins in the first seven starts, but of course, Bristol a couple of weeks ago, a lot of controversy there. He got into an accident with Sterling Marlin, and, and everyone knows what's happened there, of course. And the question mark this week is, what will Earnhardt do? You know, how can he approach today's race? Can he afford to be the aggressive Dale Earnhardt? We've seen Rambo of the short tracks, as they call him. Can he afford to do that? You know, NASCAR has talked to him. They told him to sort of use his best judgment, so to speak, and how he drives a short track, but uh, we'll see what happens. As we mentioned, Jerry Gappins is joining us on the broadcast today. He's on pit road with Dale Earnhardt. Jerry? Thanks very much, Eli Gold, standing next to Dale Earnhardt. And Dale, a lot of controversy the last couple weeks following Bristol. You've had a chance to sit and collect your thoughts and read all the reports, all the trades, have all the type of a plus and a minus on the situation. Looking back, what's your reaction to the criticism and also to the support of uh, the Marlin case? There wasn't nothing to it, you know, it's gotten a situation there and uh, gotten a wreck, you know. Uh, that's, you know, last race. We, had, we don't even think about it. Did, uh, when you got pinched in there, three cars wide on a short track like Bristol, was that part of the problem? What exactly happened to cause Sterling to go up in the wall there in the contact? Well, you know, we just got in there under, in traffic and uh, the slow car, you know, was three wide there and it just got in a jam. A lot of media have picked up those stories and kind of blown it out like some of the media can do in a case. And we've been talking about it all weekend here, and you read the papers. Do you worry about getting in the car this afternoon? Do you worry about any retaliation by some of your peers at all? No. 
the weather here washed out all practice and qualifying on the second day. Everybody's going to be starting here today cold, not having a chance to work on their race setups very much. How's that going to affect the start of this race? Well, everybody will be a little cautious, hopefully, at the first and get settled down. But, uh, you know, we've uh, pretty much got a basic setup for this racetrack, and uh, we feel like we're confident with, uh, to go with what we got, and I uh, feel like we're going to be competitive today. As far as the aggressive driving and, and the talks that we've seen there, do you feel more pressure as the Winston Cup champion? Do you think a little more attention is, is geared towards you than what would be if Dale Earnhardt had finished fifth or sixth in the Winston Cup standings last year? You know, I think it's because we're winning so much. And uh, any time you're up front, they're going to be shooting at you. Okay, Dale Earnhardt looking forward to his sixth win here today at Martinsville. Well, thank you, Jerry Gappins. You know, Dale Earnhardt may not feel like it's going to be that aggressive a day today, but the short tracks have always been a battleground. It was a war two weeks ago at Bristol. And a lot of folks are saying that maybe Harold Kinder shouldn't wave a green flag. He should fire a cannon or blow a bugle or it signify the battle to begin. As today's race gets started, Eli, it should be a barn burner. You know, Tony Spanos from Sydney, Australia is in this race. It's his very first Winston Cup event. He's from Sydney, Australia, as we say, and he's driving for James Hilton. He said, if you've heard of the Dirty Dozen, he says, we've got the Dirty Two Dozen here today. And, of course, a sold-out grandstand. Tickets were gone quite early this morning. Folks are expecting another aggressive short track race. On the other end of what we were talking about regarding Dale Earnhardt at Bristol a couple of weeks ago was Sterling Marlin. He was leading the Valley Day. 500 and the Piedmont Oldsmobile when he and Earnhardt got together. Again, Jerry Gappin standing by, this time with Sterling Marlin. Jerry? Thank you very much, Eli Gold. We're standing next to Sterling Marlin. Sterling, last couple weeks, your name's appeared a lot in print after the Bristol incident. What what are your feelings looking back now that you've had a couple weeks to, to think about it? Well, it was just, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's just water on the bridge and, uh, you know, we're going and run here and uh, hopefully we can get up front again and be battling for the lead again and, uh, you know, hopefully it won't come out like it did a couple of weeks ago. But, uh, you know, it was uh, pretty much it was starting to rain. And uh, I guess Dale just got over range, just got in a hurry. And, uh, you know, unfortunately took us out. Do, you, do the thoughts of revenge come through your mind as you get ready here for Martinsville today at all? <laughs> well, I'd be lying if I said it didn't. Uh, I think you're looking at a bunch of drivers that, you know, we've run two short tracks in a row and everybody's tempers are kind of up. And uh, I think everybody's just on a... <laughs> on the verge exploding here, so uh, it should be a good race. So that's how it stacks up, the Sovereign Bank 500 here at Martinsville. The other element always at Martinsville, Jerry Punch, is the fact that these cars take abuse because these long straightaways and the tight turns make for a long afternoon. Well, they do. Neil Bonnet told me, he said, you know, these cars normally will run 125, maybe 128 miles an hour at the end of the straightaway. you got to get that car slowed down, get it turned around about face 180 degrees to go back up the back stretch. It's like two drag strips connected by very short, tight turns. It's very hard to get the car slowed down and brakes. It's certainly the key factor in winning here at Martinsville. And even though these drivers and crews have been here at Martinsville for years, they're not against experimenting just a little bit. As a matter of fact, Richard Petty trying a new style of brake today that Jerry Gappins has been looking at throughout the morning, and we'll be updating you on that story as our telecast continues. But as soon as we come back to Martinsville, we'll continue our look at pre-race activities, the Sovereign Bank 500, coming up shortly right here on SETN. Kenny Bernstein just yesterday setting the quickest elapsed time with a brand new track record there in his car. So it's quite a week for that racing team. It is indeed. They would like to get a win here. Morgan Shepard drives this track very well. In fact, their cars ran so well here last year with Joe Rutman aboard. They finished second in this race, fifth in the fall race. So that Quaker State team has always run this track well. Morgan Shepard, a former winner here, got his first short track win or first Winston Cup win ever here back in 1981. So he's no stranger to victory lane. I think that team may be awfully strong today. As a matter of fact, one of the more innovative pre-race festivities we've seen here over the years was Morgan Shepard's wedding a few years ago, right here on the front straightaway at Martinsville. But right now, he's standing by with our Jerry Gappins. Gentlemen? Pole sitter Morgan Shepard, proud to be in the number one spot from his first pole since 1982. And Morgan, it's a good place to start in a tight track like Martinsville. Right, you know, most of the time when I've uh, won races up here at Martinsville, I've had to come from back in the pack. But uh, this way, uh, you save a lot of sheet metal, you save your brakes, and uh, anytime you start up front, especially at Martinsville, uh, it gives you an edge. How important is that first win? Do you think it's going to come here today, and this is the start of things, good things to come? Well, I hope this is the first win for our Quaker State uh, Buick. You know, uh, this team has really worked hard. Uh, they was new on the scene in uh, 85 and uh, or, or in 86 and uh, uh, I'd just really like to pull it off for him here today. 
How much concern do you have? This is a tight track, Martinsville, and it's notorious for bending a little sheet metal and all the controversy we've had the last couple of weeks. Is that on your mind, the, the fact that there's going to be some bumping around? Are you ready for that type of thing? You have to be ready. Uh, that's what happens here at Martinsville because uh, Martinsville depends so much on the brakes because it's just like a drag strip. We drag down the straightaway and then we stop in the corner. So uh, you got to take care of your brakes and, and uh, occasionally uh, somebody's going to slip into you and occasionally you're going to slip into somebody else. What's your biggest concern to go 500 laps here today? Brakes. Taking care of my brakes. Okay, there's pole sitter Morgan Shepard in the Quaker State Buick right up here front where he wants to be. So that's Morgan Shepard, the pole sitter for today's Sovereign Bank 500 with a brand new qualifying record over 91 miles an hour, Eli. He should be strong, but a lot of cars will be strong today and a lot of question marks because of the, of the lack of practice time and the rain we've had the last couple of days. Again, if you're just joining us, there was qualifying here on Thursday and a small time practice session Thursday afternoon. All day Friday it rained, all day Saturday it rained, and that sets the stage for this afternoon's Sovereign Bank 500. Let's take a look at today's starting lineup. You've already met Morgan Shepard, the Quaker State Buick with a new track qualifying record of 91.355 miles an hour. And with him on the front row, recovering still from a shoulder injury suffered at Darlington a few weeks ago, Terry Labonte and Junior Johnson's Budweiser Chevrolet. Eli Rowe 2 will have Harry Gant, car number two, 47 year olds from Taylorsville, North Carolina. Handsome Harry hasn't won since late in 1985. He will start third. Alongside Harry, the man who's been the man of the year, Dale Earnhardt. Five wins in the first seven starts of the year, three in a row in his Chevrolet at over 91 miles per hour. That man won here at Martinsville a year ago. Rusty Wallace in the Kodiak Pontiac at 90.951 miles an hour. And Kyle Petty, whose Wood Brothers racing team is based just up the road in Stewart, Virginia. Kyle will start sixth. Row four will have Jeff Bodine, a fellow who was very successful here in the modified ranks, picked up a win in Winston Cup competition here back in 1984. His Chevrolet at 90.742 miles per hour. Alongside him, Alan Kowicki, best finish of his young career here a year ago. He finished fourth. He will be driving the Z-Rex Ford. Row number five here at Martinsville today, Neil Bonnet of Valvoline Pontiac. He qualified at 90.737 miles an hour. And after nearly pulling off a win at Bristol, Tennessee, Richard Petty and the famed STP Pontiac, he'll start 10th in today's field, qualifying at 90.573. Row 6 will have Darrell Walsh from a seven-time winner, along with Dave Marcus, a veteran driver. Row 7, Bobby Allison, never won here at Martinville, and the rookie, Dale Jarrett. In the eighth row, Ricky Rudd from Chesapeake, Virginia, and Buddy Arrington, he's from right here in Martinsville. Benny Parsons and Mike Waltrip in row number 9. Row 10, back in the field, will have Phil Parsons, a young driver running awfully well in the Copenhagen car. Kenny Schrader, we know about his season. Sterling Marlin and Bobby Hillard Jr. in row 11. We're at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. Jerry Cranmer will start the Elmo Langley car. ARCA driver Steve Christman, Eddie Beerswall in another Eddie, or at least Buddy Arrington car, and Jimmy Means also in row 13. Row 14, a couple of independents, J.D. McDuffie in the car number 70, Slick Johnson in the car number 12, row 15, Derek Cope from the Winston West ranks, and Tony Spanos. And where's Bill Elliott? There's Bill Elliott starting dead last, 31st on the field after problems with an engine here on Thursday and rain on Friday. Friday, Bill just couldn't get the car qualified. There was no opportunity for him. He uses a provisional starting spot for the first time. He will start 31st. And we'll take you to the green flag as soon as we come back to Martinsville. For Pocono Raceway, race journalist Jack Aroot. Why just watch auto racing? On With Jerry Punch and Jerry Gappins, I'm Eli Gold. The light is out atop the Pontiac safety car. There's your front row, Morgan Shepard in the green and white car number 26, Terry Labonte in the Budweiser car. And here, Jerry, you see they invert the uh, starting positions if they want on the restarts during the race, something unique to short track racing. Well, here the fast way around Martinsville is the inside groove, and that's where they want the fast cars to be. The slower cars on the outside, so they won't get in the way. Green flag waving, Eli. We're underway. Here in Martinsville, the Sovereign Bank 500 quickly. Morgan Shepard, car number 26. The Quaker State Buick makes the dive to the inside. Everybody through the turn cleanly. 
very difficult. You've got to be awfully careful early on in a race like this when the brakes are so important. Traffic is very, very tight. There's Harry Gant making a move inside Terry Labonte. Gant trying to make that bid inside the Budweiser Chevrolet. Rusty Wallace is up to fourth. Dale Earnhardt is fifth. And oh, Jimmy Means. Jimmy Means in the Turtle Wax car with a problem coming off the corner. There is no caution flag being shown. A little off-road racing by Means. It's back underway. We're still under green. There you see Alan Kowicki in the seven. Richard Petty in the 43 as the field works. Seeing some smoke already from Tony Spanos. Car number 48 in the James Hilton car. Spanos is the driver from Sydney, Australia. At this time a year ago, he was a professional polo player. And he got off that horse to get into some horsepower. And Tony Spanos in car number 48. We see some smoke from that car. But there is your race leader, Morgan Shepard in car number 26. He has run well here at Martinsville over the years. And Eli, just a little bit of smoke out of the rear of Morgan Shepard's car that time by. So we'll keep an eye on that car as the day progresses. Shepard leading. Harry Gant in second spot. There's Gant's car, the Skull car. The Budweiser effort for Terry Labonte is third. There you see the 17 tied machine for Darrell Waltrip. He's mired back in the pack. He started 11th and lost a couple of spots on the start. He's now running 13th. And Shepard's starting to stretch it out just a bit here in Martinsville. You see the different colors in the turns on the racetrack. Martinsville is unique in that they have cement on the inside groove and asphalt on the outside. Hence the white grooves inside and the darker grooves to the outside. As there's a good look at Terry Labonte and the 11 chasing down the 33 of Gant. The third car in the picture there, Jeff Bodine in the Levi Garrett Chevrolet. Labonte making a move beneath Gant, but Gant has the horsepower to hold him off. That's a brand new race car. They built that car. Tim Brewer, the crew chief for Neil Bonnet last year, built that car along with Wayne Dalton, for especially for short tracks at Wilkesboro and Martinsville. We'll see how that car is going to perform today. There's a move of 62. Steve Christman inside of Jimmy Means. And oh, Morgan Shepard and Jimmy Means together. They spin. Everybody else managing to avoid. Shepard pulls away, but we are under caution. We are under caution here at Martinsville as Jimmy Means now tries to get car number 52 righted and back into competition. As Jerry Punch and I were mentioning at the outset of the broadcast, braking is very much a factor here at Martinsville, slowing these big cars down time and time again. And with that subject in mind, here's our first SETN pit tip with Jerry Gappins. Year after year, one of the big stories here at Martinsville has been the brake problems. Because of the long straightaways and the short, tight corners, brakes seem to go away very soon in the race. Well, Dale Inman and the STP Pontiac crew have tried to come up with something a little different that they hope will solve that problem for driver Richard Petty today. What they've done is they've gone to a new brake designed by Alcom out in England. They're the same people that do a lot of work with March Engineering on the Indy cars. It's a bigger, beefier brake unit with new technology, and it offers a lot more of shoe area on the brake surface to help hopefully last a little bit longer during the race. The other thing you'll see most of the teams do here, put color heat sensitive paint on the rotors. The paint the paint will tell the driver or the crew actually when they take the tires off how hot these brakes are getting. The green, when the green turns to white, that means the low end of heat has started to work a little bit and the brakes are warming up. When they start wiping out the orange color here that you see, that means they're getting a little bit hotter yet. And when this pink or reddish color has gone to white, that means the brakes are extremely hot and possibly about ready to go away. That's part of the brake story here at Martinsville today. It is very much a story, Jerry, as action now is on pit road. There's Morgan Shepard's Quaker State car getting a pit stop as they're coming in. They were changed four tires, as most cars will do under caution. We'll be right back with more from Martinsville. Running in sixth position now is Benny Parsons, and Bill Elliott is up to the seventh spot, Jerry. He decided not to make a pit stop and get himself out from behind all of that race traffic after starting 31st. They really want to see how this brand-new Ford Thunderbird out of Mike Laughlin's shop will work. It's a brand-new short track car. Again, they started back in 31st spot, now being shown up in the top seven. And looks like Earnhardt now beginning to make a move on Harry Gant. Dale is not content, obviously, to run second. He never is. And he's going to try and work on Harry. Good run so far for Darrell Waltrip. He's still there, obviously, early in the race. But in light of how the season has started for the Tide Chevrolet, Darrell encouraged here at Martinsville. 
Again, we we'll, we'll want to mention, too, Jerry, a lot of these guys did not have any practice after Thursday afternoon. For those who might just be joining us, this is the first sunshine we have seen here since Thursday. So it is very much a hit or miss type of situation on the car setup for some of the teams. Absolutely. And what a packed grandstand they have here at Martinsville, Virginia. The 40th anniversary of this short track, over 40,000 people, a record crowd for the richest short track event in NASCAR history. It looks like they're going to get with the action in the program pretty quickly. Harry Gant, Dale Earnhardt, and Darrell Waltrip in that order. You're talking about those seats. Look at the brand new Winston Tower seats up uh, just off to our left here in turn number two. Actually, turns one and two, and those were sold. Everything was sold here. They started selling standing room tickets at about 9.40 this morning. Earnhardt there. There's Derek Cope, the 19 car, with Bill Elliott just around him. Likewise, Terry Levante. Good battle there for the lead. And you know, every time Earnhardt makes a move, Darrell Waltrip is going to try and take advantage of it as well. So Earnhardt's got to worry about going forward. There he goes with the inside move down the back straight away into turn number three. Harry Gant gets kicked to the outside, and he may have trouble hanging on to second place as Darrell Waltrip now moves past Harry Gant. So a quick shuffle of positions here as Gant went high. You talk about the phenomenal year Earnhardt has had. Not only five wins and seven starts, but he has led, actually led, 55% of the laps that he's running this year. That's a tremendous figure. And he right now looks like he's got his hands full with Darrell Waltrip. Alan Kowicki is still fourth. Fifth is Neil Bonnet. He's running well. Sixth is Benny Parsons. Jeff Bodine is seventh. Eighth is Rusty Wallace. Ninth, a good run for Dave Marcus so far. And Labonte is now tenth with Bill Elliott having dropped back to the 11th spot as they shuffle it off now here on the straightaway. Some of the Waltrip fans now up on their feet waving their tied hats and caps. The best they've seen Waltrip run all year. In fact, the best short track finish he's had was 12th a week ago in Bristol, Tennessee. See those beautiful azaleas there ringing the racetrack. There's something else that separates Martinsville from all the rest. It's far and away the prettiest racetrack in the country. But these guys right here, they'll tell you it's an awfully ugly racetrack on the surface for it to be so pretty to look at because it's a track that does take its toll on driver and equipment. That's what I say about it being ugly. It's a tough place for them to get around. It looks like Earnhardt and Walter want to pull away and try to settle it among themselves. There's the battle from fourth on back. Rusty Wallace in the 27, the Kodiak Pontiac, a winner here last year. The Pontiacs run well at this track. They run well on the short tracks in general. That car, Rusty Wallace, has always run well on the short tracks. Wallace is there. Dave Marcus, a pretty good run. Back behind Wallace. There's Bodine in front of Wallace. Benny Parsons in the red car as Jeff Bodine tries to make a move to the inside. If you've never been to Martinsville, you see that yellow curbing just inside the turn separating the racing facility from the grassy area. It's not come into play yet here today. Maybe Jimmy Means earlier, but that's something else for you to watch. Uh, the cars occasionally hop over the curbing. Darrell Waltrip still doing a heck of a job right there, right in the tire tracks of Dale Earnhardt. There's a look at the three-time Winston Cup champion, Darrell Waltrip, in the tide ride he has this year. That's the Waddell Wilson prepared car in the Rick Hendrick stable. There's a battle back in the pack, right? That's going to be from 10th on back. Labonte, Kenny Schrader, Ricky Rudd, and Phil Parsons. Now for 10th spot, Schrader tried to make a move inside of Labonte but couldn't. Now back near the front. That's a good battle ongoing for the lead here. Waltrip in the 17, Earnhardt in the 3, side by side as they go down the back straightaway. And Waltrip just outdives him into turn number 3. This has really got to be encouraging. Look at the fans on their feet and they're waving. Now, how often do you see fans on a short track get up and scream and yell like that? It's a heck of a show so far. Jerry Gappins, how do you see it? As we see Daryl Waltrip working outside, going underneath Dale Earnhardt coming out of two, we notice the clean passes we're seeing so far early in this race. The clean passes. If you notice Dale Earnhardt's car, not many wheel marks on that left side. Also, Daryl Waltrip just made a nice clean pass. Good clean racing so far, even though it's very competitive. It's a good point that Jerry Gappins brings up especially in light of the fact of what has gone on over the last number of weeks on short track racing. Everybody minding their P's and Q's, as they say so far, and Darrell's going to be tickled leading the show here. 
He does, Eli. I think that, that NASCAR director of competition, Dick Beatty, has had some heart-to-heart -heart chat this week with some of the drivers, Jeff Budine, Diller, and Hart, just to name a few, about that kind of thing, what happened at Bristol. And one driver certainly needs a heart-to-heart -heart chat from possibly a mechanic right now. That's Morgan Shepard. The car that sat on the pole is smoking. We, we saw a wisp of smoke early on, and he's certainly now showing more smoke in the Quaker State Buick. Average speed at this point is 74.934 miles an hour. Waltrip leads Earnhardt second, Kowicki third, fourth is Bodine, fifth is Rusty Wallace, Bill Elliott is up to sixth, Dave Marcus is seventh, eighth is Harry Gant, ninth Kyle Petty, and tenth Neil Bonnet as we continue at the Sovereign Bank 500 here in Martinsville on SETN. You ever heard of race car drivers running with a family car oil? These do. Winners like Jeff and Brett Bodine, Tim Richmond, and Daryl Waltrip, they use the same new Superflow 10W30 motor oil you can buy in store. It has a special additive wear band that's super at block and wear. Right, guys? Right! Good catch! You play football? No! Too dangerous! Want your engine to last? Go with the flow. New Superflow. I could just stop briefly. Had a leaky transmission. They had to repair it. Crew chief Larry Reynolds now checking with the NASCAR Winston Cup official. Done. It looks like we got that leak fixed. The NASCAR officials are watching it close because they don't want any liquid on the track right now. Very dangerous condition. But right now it looks like Morgan Shepard is not leaking the transmission oil. But it looks also like it's not going to be his day for victory here at Cardinals. Jerry Gappin's on pit road. The pace that Darrell Waltrip is setting. Only 10 cars remain on the lead lap at this moment. Waltrip, Earnhardt, who is second. Alan Kowicki, a strong third place run. Jeff Bodine is fourth. Fifth is Rusty Wallace. Boy, look, somebody ought to tell Harry Gant that they've paved the place. Well, he is having his troubles. Apparently, they have rear end problems in the car. Maybe losing some grease, something, but he just cannot get that car off the corner. It looks like he's dirt tracking. Bill Elliott is now running sixth. He has dropped the spot to Rusty Wallace on the restart. Dave Marcus is seventh. Bill Parsons, eighth. Kyle Petty is ninth. And Neil Bonnet still running tenth. Boy, Harry Gant, look at him just sliding off the corners off number four. He is really swatting flies in that car, trying to hang on to that steering wheel back and forth out of the corners. You got a feel for Harry Gant trying to do well. They have not had good luck this season. And again, he just keeps the wall, the rear of the car from tagging the wall coming out of turn four. Kyle Petty's right behind him there as they go around Eddie Beer's wall. Kyle probably doesn't know exactly which direction to go either. Not sure what Harry's going to do. Man. Well, Kyle's probably just sitting back here enjoying the show. I mean, that's got to be something to see from behind that, uh, that skull car. You know what else? Harry's pit area is just as you come off turn number four here. It's one of the very first pits where Travis Carter and the crew are watching. So they're getting an eyeful every time Harry comes off the fourth turn. Finally, Kyle goes around to the outside as the skull band is still being wrestled around by Harry Gant. Look at that. And he's using up his tires on top of everything else. I mean, this is not just a situation that has one ramification to it. The problem can continue to snowball. Well, it looks like when Harry gets on the throttle coming out of the corner, that one wheel may be turning, the other one may not be. That'll turn the car completely sideways. It's all he can do to keep the car from spinning. Now he's headed down pit road where Travis Carter, Wayne Bumgarner, and the rest of the Skull crew will maybe try to decipher what the problem is. They have the jack underneath the right side of the car. We have the clocks on here timing that pit stop. They Will, they have a hose spraying the front across the grill of the car to keep it nice and cool. It is a warm day here at Martinsville. They will come around and change all four tires. Eli, as you said, they probably have burnt the rubber completely off the skull band in Chevrolet. Gant sitting patiently in the car knowing that we are under green. He is losing valuable time. There's part of Jeff Bodine's crew, Gary Nelson, them watching the work being done on Harry Gant's car. 28.2 seconds. Not exactly the best pit stop, but not bad for four tires. You got a feel for Harry Gant there. Neil Bonnet who is now running in the 10th spot, about to be lapped. Or darn close to it here. Neil is running in 11th. Let me correct myself. And Darrell Walter closing in on him, about to put him a lap down if he can keep that tied Chevrolet in the straight direction. These two guys were teammates a year ago, driving the tandem cars for Junior Johnson and Bonnet, trying to hold him off in trouble. Alan Kowicki. Kowicki's car, a lot of smoke out of the Z-Rex Ford. And it looks like he has certainly got problems. Maybe he's blown an engine on the car. 
And the car still seems to be under power, so maybe just some oil line or something come loose. And it looks as though Darrell Waltrip will beat Neil Bonnet to the stripe. Neil tried, but he could not stay on the lead lap, so Justice Kowicki seems to blow the engine here. Neil Bonnet will go down a lap as we are under caution for the third time. Jerry Gaffin. Darrell Waltrip now comes in, makes a quick stop. Full load of fuel going in the left side of the car. They put another can in now. Right side tires being replaced. Meanwhile, the left side tires are now being loosened. The jack comes over to go underneath the car. Raise the left side of the car now as fresh tires will now go on the left-hand side. Take a look at those tires as they come off the car. They look in good shape. He's handling very well. What L. Wilson just leads down towards the front of the car. They get all the lock nuts on, and he's off and away. And Darrell Waltrip is having a good day so far. Good work for the crew there as they get Darrell Waltrip back. Oh, Richard Petty and Phil Parsons trying out for the Olympic synchronized spinning team. Evidently, that's under caution. You uh, rarely see that under caution. These cars trying to get right and here's Rusty Wallace threading the needle between Petty and Parsons. He just gets through. <laughs> what a job by Rusty Wallace and a good run Eli for Bill Elliott. Let's take a look and, and possibly see what the reason for that is. Jerry Gap is in their pits. Crew chief Ernie Elliott for Bill Elliott's car. Bill's come up from last to fifth. Good ride so far. Any any key to that success so far in early going? No, nah, just trying to stay out of trouble. We didn't stop on the first stop when everybody else did, you know, so that was, but that's why we, you know, we had to take that gamble early on. Turn in just a moment. Same thing we had last fall, you know, same car, good engine, good tires, good chassis right now. We're taking it easy. What's Rusty saying on the radio? Uh, he says, keep telling me to save my brakes. There's Rusty in car 27, the Kodiak Pontiac. Working around Michael Waltrip in car number 30. This car is nicknamed Samson. It's the car he won with last year at Bristol. He won here at Martinsville with. It's one of the first downsized cars built, and we have a caution here at Martinsville. Caution on the speed where there's some debris, Jerry. We're getting a report from NASCAR that there is some debris on the racetrack, and that is putting us under caution here for the fourth time this afternoon. You're talking about Rusty. Well, this car named Samson is one of the first downsized cars that Banjo Matthews built. It was owned by Joel Halpern when he had it. For some, I don't know how you work in that maze of massive people there, but you do. Well, it was a critical pit stop last year in the Goodies 500 that Jimmy May car and Barry Dodson and the crew were able to get the Kodiak Pontiac back out and allow Rusty Wallace to take the win. There's the Ford coming out. That's uh, the car number nine of Elliott, the Z-Rex car back out. That is Alan Kowicki. You see him moving down pit road. And Earnhardt is able to beat Rusty Wallace off pit road. Here come Alan Kowicki and Jeff Bodine off pit road. Good pit service for everybody. Some good quick stops here. Richard Petty, Kyle Petty. Oh, Kyle is going around. Kyle Petty has spun his car here off turn number two. And a tire loose, Eli. The left rear tire of the car now will not move. It's down on the pavement. You see him trying to get the car. And there's the left rear tire missing from the car. So a problem on Kyle Petty. And there's the left rear tire over in the grass, some 50 feet from where that Sitco Ford has come to rest in turn two. Looks like Kyle venting a little frustration there. That's steam coming off of Kyle from inside the car. I'm sure he's going to be a little bit frustrated. What a great run he's had, running in fifth spot, yeah. showing in the top five all day. You know, last year he had one of the best combined finishes of anybody at this track. Kyle finished fifth and sixth in the two events at Martinsville last year. Boy, a tough break is that Goodyear Eagle just brings the afternoon, or at least the moment, uh, to a halt. You see Kyle signaling to someone to try and let's get this thing going. He, he's basically, no pun intended, spinning his wheels here because he can't get any traction off the racetrack. Well, he's motioning to the wrecker. Let's see what the Winston Cup Series sign tells us. Yes, Kyle Petty, car number 21, has had trouble. And what did he have? He's lost a tire. We obviously knew that, Eli, but uh, that helps us a little bit. And they are bringing the car down pit road. The Wood Brothers standing by to make repairs on the Sitco Ford. Well, a tough, tough break. We are under caution if you're just joining us here at the Sovereign Bank 500 with Bill Elliott continuing to lead. This caution came out because of debris on the racetrack. Jerry Gappins has been patrolling pit road, and he's there in the Wood Brothers pit. Watch the story, Jerry. Petty Sitko Ford now comes along pit road backwards, brought in on a wrecker. Tough break for Kyle Petty, running strong in the top five all day. His car lost the left rear tire. They have to put that back on. They're readjusting the rear trunk lid right now. And now Kyle will have to straighten himself back down pit road the wrong way. Boy, Kyle's going to have to swing around, go back up pit road. He can't come out onto the racetrack. He's got to go back up pit road. 
Yet he is coming out, of the, coming racetrack, out of the racetrack. And that will get him a black flag. That is against the NASCAR rules. Of course, the NASCAR official motioned him up pit road, but he meant for him to go up and turn around. As you said, he like come back down pit road, but he peeled out on the racetrack, and that will get oh. his number on the board there. Number 21, you see Harold Kinder getting the, the word hold. We just saw looking on as we get set to go back to green flag racing. We're at Bill Elliott's pit with brother Dan, who helps Ernie down here in the pit road. And Dan, you got Bill back out on the track before everybody else from Nifty Pit Work here. Yeah, we only changed two right side tires, so we want to get the car back out front. He has a little bit of trouble pacing, but once we get back out front, he doesn't have any trouble running out front. So if we can help him out and get him back up, that's where he needs to be. Think this race is going to be one right here in the pits? For us, it may be. Benny Parsons has been on and off pit road, and now we see they're taking Benny's car behind the wall. We should have an update on that in just a moment. There are the top five. The only other car on the leaderboard on the lead lap is car 55, Phil Parsons. Running in seventh is Bobby Allison. Eighth is Terry Labonte. Kenny Schrader is ninth, and Neil Bonnet is tenth. They're all a lap down. Eli, the number one priority in the Elliott Stable over the winter was a short track program. They have come to grips with that program, a brand new race car. They are leading from last to first here at Martinsville. They have finished fourth at Richmond, fourth a week ago at Bristol. They are really coming to grips with their program, and he looks like he's got a good shot at possibly winning today. Bill Elliott trying to take off and leave Rusty Wallace and the rest behind him. Car 90 is not on the lead lap, but the 3, 55, and 5 are just keeping an eye on Benny Parsons. He's now out of the car. They have evidently given up their efforts to get back in today's race. Jerry Gappins is with Benny Parsons. Gentlemen. Benny Parsons up and out of the car. For you. The car was working fine. I just couldn't keep brakes. If I really used any brakes, it'd go away in a hurry. How's the competition out there? Is there much bumping around or is it a pretty clean race? Looks pretty tough right now. The track conditions, how about them? The track's getting a little slick right now. Little slick, but Rusty Wallace still keeping things going there with Bill Elliott. Cars getting through the corners fairly well. Average speed 70.385 miles an hour. Looks like Bill Elliott's having a little bit of trouble keeping the car down on the bottom of the racetrack. He gets a little bit of nudge from Rusty Wallace there. Just a gentle touch to let him know you're back there. That'll help you have trouble getting Certainly. through the corners. And Rusty will make a move on the inside. It's going to be tight in turn one. He taps him, and er Elliott hangs onto the car. Good driving by Bill Elliott. He gets nudged up out of the groove. Now it's a drag race. Rusty Wallace has the inside covered against Bill Elliott. Closing in from the rear flank, there's the nose of Dale Earnhardt's car. He'll try and cover the inside and not let Elliott back in line. Dale says, that looks like fun, fellas. <laughs> I think I'll get up there and play a little while, too. Now, Earnhardt will follow Wallace through beneath Bill Elliott. You see Bill having trouble getting the car on the bottom groove and the car really not working that well on the inside of the racetrack. These cars averaging some 89 to 90 miles an hour a lap they're still going what 118 120 on the straightaways they probably can go 125 on the straightaways they really come out of the turn screaming here and turn these cars some 8,000 or more rpms they really twist the engines awfully tight they are probably going 127 miles an hour as they jump on the binders here in turn one those front five cars that you saw there are all on the lead lap richard petty the STP Pontiac slowing down. Richard Petty slows. Don't know if he's going to be able to get around to pit road. They pit on both sides of the racetrack here at Martinsville. But Richard is now just coming past the entrance to the back pit here in turn three as Earnhardt tries to work his way to the inside of Rusty Wallace going around Jerry Cranmer in the Elmo Langley car. And Richard Petty is not going to make it. And the seven-time Winston Cup champion after a tremendous run last week at Bristol, finishing second, brings out another caution here at Martinsville. And here's the leader, Rusty Wallace, making his way to pit road. Race leader Rusty Wallace brings his Kodiak Pontiac to a stop. The crew goes to work on those right side tires. They top off the fuel, not very empty at all since they just stopped a few laps ago. But meanwhile, this gives them the chance to get the new tires in. As you saw, Darrell Walter go ahead and speed on out past Rusty Wallace. Now they're going to go ahead and change the left side tires. So apparently, Rusty Wallace doesn't want to take any chances. He wants to put four fresh tires on his Kodiak car, and he's off in the range. So a good pit stop. Here comes Wal oh, Waltrip and Earnhardt. It's stop, now go. Now it's a drag race, and Earnhardt has the inside <laughs> advantage. Well, 
is racing, as they say, everywhere on this racetrack, and that abusing the brakes just a bit more as we continue at Martinsville. More of the Sovereign Bank 500 coming right up. High-performance race cars like the Wins Kmart Friction Proofing Special need high-performance chemicals to keep them running their best. Champions like Blake Speed have relied on Wins quality products for over 47 years. To run up front in NASCAR Winston Cup competition, you need an edge. That's why I set up my own shop and build my own engine. And I use Wins quality automotive chemicals in the operation and maintenance of my precision Oldsmobile Delta 88. Wins products are available at Kmart, America's favorite store. For Pocono Raceway. This with the STP Pontiac. Norman Koshimitsu there in the foreground, sweeping the pit area for Rusty Wallace as we're about set to go back to green. Harold Kinder there, and Bobby Allison in car 22, and Ricky Rudd in the 15 now trying to get back one of the laps that they are down, and Bobby Allison has done so. Car 22, the Miller American Buick now back on the tail end of the lead lap. The race leader is car 3, Dale Earnhardt, the 17, Waltrip right behind him in second. 49-year-old Bobby Allison racing for 21 years here at Martinsville has never won in a Winston Cup event at Martinsville Speedway, trying to keep that lap. He can't quite hang on. Looks like Earnhardt has a shot on the outside. Bobby trying to work that inside groove, but it's not going to pay off here, or so it doesn't look. No, he'll go a lap down now, as he has been trying to battle all day long on these restarts to get back on the lead lap. Average speed, 70.052 miles an hour. If you're just tuning in, you're watching the Sovereign Bank 500 from the Martinsville Speedway here in Martinsville, Virginia. I'm Eli Gold with Dr. Jerry Punch joining us here in the booth, and Jerry Gappins on pit road, and Earnhardt strong again awfully strong and one car that's right there with him is Daryl Waltrip and what a good day it is for Waltrip and the tide crew Waddell Wilson has really put a power plant beneath the hood of that car and Waltrip has been a factor all afternoon as has Rusty Wallace in the car that he won with last year in the goodies 500 Daryl Waltrip kind of a, a cooperative effort setting up the race car Darrell takes pride in, in getting the chassis set up just right now he's got his hands full with Rusty Wallace in the Kodiak Pontiac well, you see all the dark stuff on the back of Waltrip's car. Looks like a lot of oil or, or grease or something. You see it right there, almost obliterating the word Tide on the back of the car. They definitely have lost some fluid from that car. And you see Rusty Wallace signaling to Darrell Waltrip, waving in the mirror, waving up his hand, indicating thanks for the nice clean pass. Because Waltrip did give him racing room, and Rusty did make the pass for second spot. That's their front two cars right there, Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace. Other cars on the lead lap include Jeff Bodine, Bill Elliott, and still Phil Parsons. He's running in fifth now. He's in position for what could be, we'd have to look it up here, but it could be his very best career finish ever. Well, this is the car that Earnhardt won with up in Richmond. And is again Waltrip now having trouble. He heads down pit road, and what a disappointment it has to be for Darrell Waltrip after a tremendous run all day long. And Wallace just gets a clip of the curb there. That concrete curbing hangs on, keeps the car from spinning. And behind the wall will go the three-time Winston Cup champion. Darrell Waltrip takes a tied car back around behind the wall. And you got to feel like he's got to feel good about a good run today, but he would like to have finished and had a shot at winning. Darrell was running in third spot at the time of taking it behind the wall. We'll find out exactly. Jerry Gappins is on the way over there right now. We'll find out in just a moment exactly what the problem is. Dale Earnhardt, though, continuing to battle with Rusty Wallace. Jerry Gappins is ready. Let's go down to the Waltrip pit area. Jerry? Waltrip out of the car. Daryl disappointing in to a super day up until this point. What happened? Something happened. Uh, we've been uh, losing oil pressure. And we couldn't figure out why, and the engine finally lit up. Gave up. Did you get, I have a lot of pride using your own chassis setup. Your own chassis setup seemed to really be working well in Martinsville. Well, yeah, you know, I set the car up every week with the help of all the boys, and uh, we're just learning what it takes, and uh, we're getting there. Darrell Waltrip disappointed he's out of the race, but looks forward to the next time in his Tide machine. Dale Earnhardt, we have seen 12 lead changes already today. Earnhardt has led a number of different times, so have there been other repeat leaders. But this is the 12th lead change we've seen, and you see a jam-packed Martinsville Speedway. Couldn't put another person in here with a shoehorn. Good battle for the lead now. Rusty Wallace makes the bid on the inside. Speaking of shoehorns, it looks like Rusty Wallace was able to wedge his way in on the inside, and Walter, or rather Earnhardt, gave him some racing room there, and now Wallace seems to really have the strong horse here. Rusty Wallace running well, just looking further back. Oh, there's Richard Petty. 
Richard Petty and their STP crew, Dale Inman and the rest, still trying to figure out exactly what's amiss. Bobby Allison continuing to run well. We saw earlier he couldn't quite stay on the lead lap. There's Bobby, but he's doing well. Morgan Shepard, car 26, the pole sitter. And again, 22, Allison, 55, Phil Parsons. Not on the lead lap, or at least Phil is. Bobby's not, but it's a good battle. Good battle back in the pack. Here's a second place car, Dale Earnhardt, coming off three consecutive wins. Darlington, Wilkesboro, and Bristol a week ago. He has the hot hand right now. There's an ongoing battle between Bobby Allison and Phil Parsons. They get together this time, and Bobby spins. Bobby Allison spins as he and Phil Parsons made contact going into the corner. And this is going to bring out a caution. Harold Kinder waves the caution. Bobby Allison looking for an opening in traffic and now writes the Miller American Buick. And that's a veteran move. He kept the car running backwards, got the momentum of the car, spun it around in Joey Chitwood style, got the car headed back in the right direction. He did not lose another lap. Good move for Bobby Allison. This is the 11th caution flag of the Sovereign Bank 500 as Bobby Allison now gets back to rejoin the group, as you see, with the caution flag displayed by Harold Kinder. And that's what exper experience, there's no substitute for it in any type of sport, certainly here in auto racing. Well, indeed, Bobby Allison, the veteran, he nearly got asphyxiated last week at Bristol when he tore up that <laughs> Miller car and came in and had a lot of exhaust inside the car, had to have oxygen after the race. He is certainly would like to win today as the lead cars are on pit road. Kirk Shelmer Dean and the crew going to work on the Wrangler machine. The 27, Barry Dotson and the crew get a good pit service there for Rusty Wallace. Well, gas only for Wallace. He just come in, if you remember, just a few laps back for a four-tire change, so he is ready to go. The go sign being given by the NASCAR official. Terry Labonte's crew now, Junior Johnson. You see Pete Wright and the rest of the crew, Jeff Hammond, Tim Brewer, Sandy Jones changing four tires on that car. Earnhardt, the second car off pit road. He will bring the Wrangler machine back on the racetrack. Jeff Bodine. As far this year on the Winston Cup Tour, Eli has best finish a second at Richmond on the half-mile short track at the fairgrounds earlier in the year. He would like to pick up his first win. And there's the battle back in the pack for Earnhardt. Earnhardt just coming together with Wallace and came over that curbing. And that's a really tough ride for Earnhardt. He could have bent something in the front of the car, possibly even cut a tire down, but the car appears to be running true to form at this point in time. There's all sorts of damage that can be done to the undercarriage of that car. Meanwhile, we're getting down the last handful of laps. Let's check with Bodine's crew chief. Do you have to stop the fuel if it goes green the rest of the way? We should make it on our fuel. Uh, we're hoping for no more cautions. Uh, why don't you head on down the other end of pit road see if Richard Childress will tip his hand any for the Dale Earnhardt eff effort you just saw Bodine going around car 48 Tony Spanos there's Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace and they're moving in on Bill Elliott Elliott who would like to pick up his first ever short track win on the NASCAR Winston Cup Tour he sees those cars pulling in and the one you saw with the kangaroo on the hood Eli that is Tony Kookaburra Spanos. That's right, Kookaburra Spanos. I'll tell you, for his first Winston Cup event, he's driving James Hilton's car. For his first Winston Cup event, I think he's done pretty well. He's kept out of trouble, and that uh, is as much a key as anything else on this tour. It's a tough track to drive in Martinsville. Not a place you want to break into the sport, and Spanos having done a good job. And now it looks like Earnhardt has caught the second-place car of Bill Elliott. If you're wondering why Tony Spanos is running as you watch Bodine going around Jerry Cranmer, they're building a new race course in Australia, the Calder race course, as Earnhardt now makes a pass on Bill Elliott for position there. So Earnhardt moves up into the second spot. Spanos wants to be ready when that racetrack opens, supposedly in November of this year, in his homeland. Jerry Gappins is with Richard Childress. Jerry? Now with Richard Childress. Richard, if this thing stays green, can you go the distance on fuel? Yeah, we can make it on the fuel, but, you know, we got to have uh, uh, a caution. Our car's a little bit off right now, and Jeff's running real good, so we just have to see what happens. Without the help of a caution, you really don't think you can catch Bodine right now? Well, no, because he's running awful good. We're running about the same. Okay, Richard Childress on this end of the pits hopes that they do have a pit stop. That'll give his man, Dale Earnhardt, a chance to get back in the lead. 
Well, Richard didn't uh, mention anything about Dale going over the curb before. And the way he's running now, he seems to be running pretty well. So evidently not much of a factor, if any. And there's Jeff Bodine still looking for that first win right now. Uh, you'd think it would have to take uh, pretty much of a major malfunction for somebody to catch him. He's cruising along. And what Richard Childress didn't mention is that his crew chief, Kirk Shelmerdine, has gone down to the Rusty Wallace crew, Barry Dodson, and said, look, you know, we can't catch Bodine. Have at him if you can catch him. We can't. So, you know, that shows a lot of sportsmanship in the Wrangler crew. These crews all work closely together, and they neither one feel like they have a shot at Bodine right now, who's got a commanding lead here in the Sovereign Bank 500. Kyle Petty. Still out there circulating. The race leader, Jeff Bodine, closing in behind him, getting set to put Kyle another lap down. But that sit goes 7 Ford after the problems earlier. If you weren't with us, they had a malfunction of one of the air wrenches, the impact wrenches during a pit stop. They didn't get the lug nuts tightened down, and Kyle lost a wheel going through turn number two earlier, and that cost him some time on pit road, a couple of visits to pit road, and a subsequent black flag period. Aside from that incident, he'd be running uh, probably with the race leaders. He lost about seven laps. He's currently being shown in 12th position right now, but Kyle has had a good run here at Martinsville in the past, trying to hang on and finish as well as he can in that sit go forward. Here's the leader going around Kyle Petty. So Jeff Bodine will try and put another lap on car number 21. And the lap's now beginning to wind down for Jeffrey. He's had wins in all sorts of divisions here at Martinsville as he gets around Kyle Petty. Kyle working hard, and Jeff Bodine spins. Jeff Bodine and Kyle Petty going for the same piece of real estate. Bodine spins. He tries to get across the curbing as Earnhardt goes by. There goes Rusty Wallace to the outside. All of a sudden, you've got a new race leader as Jeff Bodine spins with Kyle Petty. And we are still under green. No caution has come out. Let's take a look at what happened. Here's the leader, Jeff Bodine, in the white and yellow numeral car number five. Kyle Petty to sit go forward. They're both in turns one and two. It looks like there's enough room. Kyle Petty is all the way up alongside the door. Bodine trying to get the car cut in the corner. They come together. Bodine's car spins. Kyle Petty hard on the brakes to keep from running right into the door of Jeff Bodine. He steers his car around Bodine, who continues to spin, let's comes across we... the curb, and let's see who else moves into the picture. Rusty Wallace will come by. Yeah, there's Terry Labonte. I don't know if we get a good picture or not of Rusty Wallace spreading to the outside of Kyle Petty's car. Evidently not, but there was a great piece of driving second time today. Rusty has just avoided an incident. And now Jeff is back up to speed, but he is not the race leader. Dale Earnhardt is, and boy, I'll tell you, there's Kyle Petty. As the season is going for Earnhardt with five wins, it's good to be good. Sometimes it's good to have a little luck on your side, too. Indeed, and you got to give a call to Jeff Bodine. He could have stalled that car over that curbing when it spun. As hot as an engine's got to be after running all afternoon, he could have stalled it there and lost a couple laps. He kept the engine fired, got the clutch in, got it back in first gear, jerked it off the curbing, and he's back out now showing in third place. Kyle Petty. And there again, Jeff Bodine. He's closing in on Rusty Wallace again, although Rusty lost some distance, having to make the evasive maneuver. Now, Jeff did not lose a lap. He lost some uh, 400 feet, maybe more, on the racetrack, but he did not lose a lap as Kyle Petty and Terry Labonte now battle. But there is the race leader, car number three, Dale Earnhardt, who right now would pick up his sixth victory in eight Winston Cup races this year. So it's all going well for the Wrangler Chevrolet. He trails Bobby Allison through the corner. Bobby is showing at this point some three laps down. Dale Earnhardt has never won the Sovereign Bank 500. He's won twice at Martinsville Speedway, both of coming in the fall events. Earlier in his career, he won back in 1980 driving for Rod Osterlin, and again a couple of years ago driving this car for Richard Childress. There is Rusty Wallace in the Kodiak Pontiac out of the Raymond Beetle stables. Don't leave us now. The final laps of the Sovereign Bank 500 coming right up. Hi, I'm Richard Petty. My life is racing. And now you can enjoy in the comfort of your home all the thrills of America's most exciting Winston Cup races just by calling this number. For only $29.95 plus $3 postage and handling, receive your choice of these six action pack fillers available only through this offer. This is stock car racing at its best, so call 1-800-652-7777 and begin enjoying these races in your home. Thrilled to all the heart-stopping excitement that only stock car racing offers. Watch Darrell Waltrip, Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, Cale Yarbrough, Tim Richmond, and all of today's best drivers battle for the checkered flag. 
If tight turns, bumper-to-bumper -bumper action, and split-second pit action keeps you on the edge of your seat, call 1-800-652-7777 for your exclusive racing videos. These videos are available in VHS and Beta for only $29.95 each. Select from these six races and live the excitement of the hottest motorsport in America. Visa and MasterCard are welcome. Start your pit row collection today. Call today and order your exclusive Winston Cup race videos now. And I'll see you at the winner's circle. Station number one. Sovereign Bank 500 in Martinsville, Virginia. Dale Earnhardt trying to negotiate around Kyle Petty in the Sitco 711 Ford Thunderbird. Eli Gold with Jerry Punch and Jerry Gappins. If you're just joining us, a quick recap. Jeff Bodine had inherited the lead not long ago. But as he and Kyle Petty got together in turn number two, Bodine spun and Dale Earnhardt, who was running up in the second place battle between himself and Rusty Wallace. Well, Earnhardt has inherited the lead. Rusty Wallace moves up to the second spot. Bodine did not lose a lap. He's still running in third. And the only other car on the lead lap, Jerry, is Phil Parsons and a quick look at the record book. That's Rusty Wallace. But Phil Parsons in the record book, this would be his best career finish ever if he does stay in his fourth position as he has right now. His fifth place finish last year in the Winston 500 his best career finish to date but as you said if he finishes today in fourth spot it will be a super good run for Phil Parsons he's had a tremendous run he lost a lap early in a race at Wilkesboro and he had a great run all afternoon and finished in the top 10 there but he could have had a better finish had not lost a lap with an early spin Here's the leader, Dale Earnhardt, and there's the third-place car. What a heartbreak for Jeff Bodine. You know, Eli, back here in the fall race last year, he sat on the pole. He led the most laps only to have a late pit stop, have him finish second to Rusty Wallace. And in this race a year ago, he was leading with 100 or so laps to go. When the timing chain broke in the car, he was relegated to a 17th-place finish. So Lady Luck has not smiled on Jeff Bodine very much at Martinsville Speedway. Now, Dale Earnhardt, car number three, has already led the most laps today, and that has some significance if you're new to Winston Cup racing. If you lead any lap at all during the course of the race, you get five bonus points. If you lead the most laps during the course of an event, you get an additional five bonus points. So Dale Earnhardt stands to rack up here today, not only on the points for the event, but these bonus points as well. He goes around Steve Christman there as the laps wind down. It's been all Dale Earnhardt here in the last 18 or so laps since Jeff Bodine had his problems up in turn number two. And Eli, if Rusty Wallace can hang on, it'll be the best finish he's had this year for the Kodiak Pontiac. His uh, previous best finish, he's had third spot finishes at Atlanta and Richmond. As the battle now back for fifth spot heating up, it looks like Terry Labonte will slide beneath the slowing car of Bill Elliott. That's for fifth spot. That's right, car number 11 and car number 9 were each showing a couple of laps down. So they were battling for position. Dale Earnhardt is the race leader, car number 3. And Earnhardt moving in on the fifth place car of Terry Labonte. That's the car Labonte lost a lap or so early and has really been fighting back. And this is the first race he's driven completely by himself since he injured that shoulder, fractured that scapula or shoulder blade at Darlington three races ago. Of course, Jerry can explain that, being that he is a bona fide MD. He's able to uh, fill us in on exactly what the injuries were, and it's obviously not affecting uh, Terry Labonte here at all. There's Rusty Wallace. See how far he leans over, working that Pontiac through the corners. There's Earnhardt going by the fifth place car at Labonte. Labonte giving him plenty of room. Laps now winding down. Just a few laps to go as we come down and the crowd waving to Dale Earnhardt. And white flag from Harold Kinder. One more time, and Earnhardt will set a record. Four consecutive wins. Six wins in the first eight starts. Just a remarkable show. You know, everybody's going to say, well, sure, Bodine had it won, and he spun out, and Earnhardt takes the victory. But Dale Earnhardt was there in a position to inherit the lead if something happened to the other guy. It did. And here comes Dale Earnhardt off turn four. Checkered flag for the victory here in Martinsville on the Sovereign Bank 500. Rusty Wallace will finish second ahead of Jeff Bodine, who is a car length and a half back in third. And the best career finish for Phil Parsons, car 55, finishing in fourth. And there, Rusty Wallace pulls up alongside Earnhardt for the congratulatory wave. Dale Earnhardt gets his 26th career victory in his first ever Sovereign Bank 500 win. The last driver to win four in a row, Darrell Waltrip in 1981. And there's a couple of guys having a discussion. Wouldn't you like to be a fly inside one of those cars and hear what they're saying? That's Jeff Bodine and Kyle Petty. 
Stay tuned, everyone. There's more as we take you to Victory Lane for the post-race festivities with the winner, Dale Earnhardt, as SETN's coverage continues from Martinsville. Win for Dale Earnhardt and the Wrangler Chevrolet. Jerry Gappins is with the winner in Victory Lane. Dale Earnhardt makes it six out of eight here at Martinsville. And Dale, you had to have your doubts there about 20 laps from the end when you just couldn't catch Bodine no matter what you were trying. Well, that's true. Uh, I knocked the front end out of line there on the, in the, on the curb there on that last restart, and the car wasn't driving as good. But, you know, we're still uh, giving it all ahead and uh, just hoping for the best. And uh, I don't know why, but Bodine spun out and got on the curb. And uh, yeah, that's bad luck for them, but, uh, you know, it's good luck for us. So uh, we'll take it. And, uh, you know, we run hard today. And I like to thank Wrangler and uh, Good Ranch and say hi to the kids back in school. And, you know, just everything. Everything's uh, doing real good. At the start of the year before Daytona, someone would have told you that you would win six out of the first eight Winston Cup <laughs> events. What would you have told them? It's possible. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt, happy. He's a NASCAR record setter. No man has ever won six out of eight, let a, even six out of ten of the first Winston Cup events. But Dale Earnhardt now puts his name in the record books, a smile on his face, and a job well done. Congratulations, Dale. Thank you. Well, again, congratulations to Dale Earnhardt. Finishing second will be Rusty Wallace. Third, Jeff Bodine. Fourth, Phil Parsons. Fifth is Terry Labonte in the Budweiser car. Sixth is Bill Elliott. Seventh, Kenny Schrader. Eighth, Bobby Allison. Ninth, Neil Bonnet. And tenth, finishing his best finish ever, Mike Walter. Jeff Bodine thought he had the race tucked away until he and Kyle Petty got together with us a handful of laps to go. Jeff is with the media now in the track and field. Bumping and shoving, that's part of racing. We've been talking about it all week, and I got shoved at the wrong time, I guess, or... Or maybe I had a mental lapse and just uh, uh, turned down too quick on Kyle. I don't really know. I don't think either one did anything intentional. It's just very unfortunate that it happened for me. Fortunate for the number three car. He, he seems to be winning everything. That he is. There on the left, Denise Lowry, Miss Winston, Dale Earnhardt, his wife, Teresa, and Clay Earls. Longtime promoter here at the Martinsville Speedway. The other half of that Jeff Bodine and Kyle Petty incident now standing by with our Jerry Gappins. Kyle Petty switched into civilian clothes from the driver's uniform. Kyle there at the end involved in a little bit of controversy. What happened with Bodine? I don't know. We were racing. He was leading the race. And uh, it was, I probably should have pulled over and let him go. It was probably my fault. I'll take the blame for it. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I... Uh, I was racing with another car, and you know I felt like that, that me racing with this guy was just as important as, as him racing to win, and uh, we just ran out of room when we got to the corner. I was on the brakes as hard as I could, but couldn't get away from him. Looking back, would you have done the same thing again? Oh, yes, yeah, racing, man. You do whatever you can. Okay, Kyle Petty, those are thoughts after the Bodine incident. Well, true sportsmanship, Eli. Kyle says it's his fault. Jeff Bodine blames himself. Possibly 50-50, both drivers at fault in that little spin late in the race. Well, true sportsmanship, what have you. It is another victory for Dale Earnhardt, his sixth of the year in eight races, and the success rolls on for the Wrangler Racing Team. And SETN, along with all of the Winston Cup family, congratulate Dale Earnhardt and the Wrangler Team for their victory in today's Sovereign Bank 500. This SETN NASCAR Racing Special has been brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? and by Exxon, quality you can count on, Exxon, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, Gatorade is thirst aid for that deep down body thirst, and by Mr. Goodwrench, no one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodwrench, no one. The executive producer of SETN Sports is Jim Wigglesworth. Today's coverage of the Sovereign Bank 500 has been produced by John R. Lewis. You've already seen the top 10 in the finishing order. 11th was Buddy Arrington, Kyle Petty 12th, Derek Cope 13th, 14th was Jimmy Means, Bobby Hillen Jr. finishing 15th, 16th was Ricky Rudd, with Morgan Shepard, Tony Spanos finishing 18th, Sterling Marlin and Jerry Cranmer rounding out the top 20. Dale Earnhardt retains the point lead in the Winston Cup Tour with Bill Elliott, Neil Bonnet, Richard Petty and Ricky Rudd in the top five spots. Don't forget to join SETN throughout this racing season. 
Our next broadcast, the Miller 500 from the Pocono International Raceway in Long Pond, Pennsylvania. That will be coming your way next month right here on SETN. And throughout the racing season, we'll be back here at Martinsville. Again to Richmond, Virginia, racing from Rockingham, all on SETN. And to help you better keep up with racing news from across the country and around the world, join Pat Scanlon weekly for This Week in Motorsports, a comprehensive look at auto racing. Our thanks to Jerry Punch and Jerry Gappens. Jerry Gappens on pit road throughout this afternoon's coverage. The average speed of today's race, 72.808 miles an hour. Dale Earnhardt wins. And for the entire SETN crew, I'm Eli Gold.